The 2018 Major League Baseball season begins on Thursday, and we're here to preview every division, including win total selections, top sleepers, World Series futures, and more. As Prime Sports Baseball, brought to you by Covers.com and uwager.eu on Prime Sports Network, starts now. All right, it's Monday, March 26th, 2018. I'm Greg DePama. Welcome to another full season of baseball coverage on Prime Sports Network. Before we get started, make sure to visit Covers Experts. That's experts.covers.com for the best in sports betting information. And for a limited time only, take 50% off any purchase by using promo code PRIME50. That's Prime 5 And if you're looking for some way to wager, get fast, reliable payouts. Just click on the You Wager banner on our website. Get started with wagering this week on the 2018 season and more with a special $100 risk-free wager when you deposit 100 minimum into your account. So joining us again from Covers Experts at Covers.com for our 2018 MLB season preview is pro sports handicapper Steve Merrill. Uh, Steve, I know you're a big baseball fan. Uh, you're going to have some uh, excellent content available at Covers All Season. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, baseball might not be the most exciting sport to watch. It's not like an NFL Sunday. Um, however, it's the most profitable sport, and it's really just purely numbers. There's twice as many baseball games during the regular season as there are NBA and basically the same amount as NFL, uh, NHL and NBA combined, twice as many games as basketball or pro hockey. So there's just tremendous opportunity. Now you think about it, an NFL week has 15 games on average. One baseball day has 15 games. So you're talking about seven times more in just one week. So, yeah, as a professional handicapper, I love baseball for that reason. We've had some monster runs over the years. In fact, two years ago, late June, in fact, the day after the NBA Finals ended two summers ago, went on a 19-0 and baseball run. It's the best I've ever had in my 21-year wow. career. Um, so awesome. that's going to be something I'm aiming to do once again this summer. <laughs> but it's literally the day after the NBA Finals ended in June of 2016. I'll never forget it. Hey, that's perfect timing because, like you said, as soon as the NBA Finals are done, that's when, you know, fans, they, they know there's nothing else really out there. I mean, look, you got golf and tennis and NASCAR and horse racing. But really, as far as the major sports, you're waiting for football season and you got baseball. That's it. It's baseball. So if, if, if you, that's why I always say with my baseball team, the Nationals, as long as the Nationals can take me to August, I'm happy. And, of course, I've had some really bad seasons with the Nationals before and the Expos. Uh, but I've always said, just take, me to, just take me to July, August. That's all I want you to do. Make it competitive until then. And then if, if you're competitive after that or not, I'm not going to feel so bad because i got football to preoccupy my, the rest of my life. So, uh, by the way, you're going to have those rankings out as well, too, right, at Covers? Yeah, the last couple of years I've done the, the weekly uh, baseball power rankings. Power rankings. And, um, okay. Yeah, once again, baseball is fun with that because, you know, once again, you get six, seven games sometimes in one week, so teams can kind of juggle a bit. And uh, we have some fun with that. Usually put a couple of sentences of tidbits and whatnot. And last year, I think it was the um, the year before, actually, when I started doing them two years ago, at the midway break, just two years ago, the San Francisco Giants were the number one team in my power rankings and how the mighty have fallen since. That's the uh, year you'll remember they came out just ice cold after the all-star break yep. and have basically been ice cold now for the past year and a half. And I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about that here a bit in the show. Yeah, let us know when uh, those will be available every week. I'm assuming it's going to be available every week at the same day. So, And let's also welcome in Scott Solitoro to the show. And Scott, uh, you're going to be doing some – Baltimore Cub programming this year, aren't you? Oh, uh, that's the uh, that's the plan. The birds, the birds and the bears. All right, I like it. The birds and the bears. Looking forward to that. And uh, you got to get Steve on the the, the bird show because since uh, Steve, you're 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 kind of, you're a Baltimore fan, aren't you? Yeah, I grew up in the Northern Virginia area in the '80s, so uh, was a Eddie Murray, Cal Ripken fan. We didn't have the Nationals back then. I would have been a Nationals fan had we had a team. In fact, I've still got a button that says baseball in 87 that i found going through some old stuff a few years ago <laughs> all right sounds good uh we won't actually get started with the american league east instead we're going to get started with the american league west scott and the houston astros are the defending champs it wasn't very easy 
But when you take a look at this, at this division, Scott, we pretty much know Houston's going to win the division. So uh, Anaheim, Seattle, most people are looking at those two teams as potential sleepers, wild card teams. Not saying that that's what you're going to go with. Uh, but Anaheim is right now 25 to one to win the World Series. Seattle's 40 to one. Houston's sitting there uh, at five to one uh, to win it all. So. Uh, what do you think about uh, this division? And besides Houston, you think you're gonna have any other teams making the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, we we had our show to do the uh, AL NL West uh, last week, and and I was talking about I really thought Anaheim was on the rise this year. Uh, I don't know, if, I don't think I like him at all yet at 25 to one. I think that uh, that's a bit too uh, too too low. I'll wait for them to struggle out the gate a little bit, but. Uh, they've got a really good baseball team this year, as we talked about last week. Uh, uh, I'm excited to see uh, what the Angels c- can do. I'm excited to see that they got some some nice pieces around Trout. I mean, Trout, the best player of the last 20 years, you know, at his age already. Uh, better than Pujols was at his age. Uh, you know, better than uh, Miguel Cabrera was at his age, too. So I need to see this guy at least make the playoffs more than once in his career yeah maybe next year uh but who knows it could happen this year i guess it all depends whether or not teams like boston and minnesota take a step back it's not that's the one thing steve is is that this isn't really in really both leagues uh, we're not going to see a lot of changes you wouldn't think and and maybe especially in american league look at the american league and i don't know i mean I don't know about how many sleepers there are. Not many, but but Anaheim and Seattle. What do you think? Are you putting either one of those teams in your wild card? I think both of them are on the fringe. Uh, both were right hovering around that 500 mark last year. And as we said, you know, this division was nowhere close last season. The Astros won the division by 21 games. Just insane. I mean, that's a couple months worth almost. No other team finished above 500 after Houston. But Anaheim and Seattle both are very close. Texas also was close, but I feel like they're on the downturn. You know, Texas two years ago I thought was the most phony team in baseball. And I mentioned this in my power rankings a lot. Their margin in one-run games was incredible in 2016, and they came back down to earth last year. They went just 13 and 24 in one-run games. I think a lot of that's kind of luck sometimes, and we saw the Rangers finish below 500. I think they're on the downturn. So if there was going to be a team to contend with Houston, I think it'd be either the Angels or Mariners this year. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure about Seattle's pitching, to tell you the truth. Uh, yeah, Texas, I think they're going to wind up being maybe one of the worst teams in baseball, uh, but it's going to be kind of hard for them to be the worst team when Detroit's in the American League. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Anaheim, Seattle, I think we all agree they'll be battling it out. Uh, I'll get you guys official wild card picks when we're done. But, uh, again, Houston is definitely the play here to win this division. Let's talk about uh, the next division, the Central Division. And in this one, I mean the East Division, excuse me. Let's go to the East, but because let's talk about the Yankees. The Yankees are the co-favorites along with the Astros to win the divi- to win it all at five to one. Then you have Boston uh, at ten to one. So there, there's that's it's enough of, of a disparity. I know a lot of people might think this is okay, definitely New York and Boston, but uh, Yankees are definitely the play here. Uh, then you have uh, Tampa. Baltimore and Toronto. So again, will one of those teams potentially be a wild card team? Toronto 30 to one, Baltimore 125 to one, and Tampa Bay at 150 to one. I know you guys being Baltimore guys, but I'll I'll take the Baltimore <laughs> thing first uh, because I actually think Baltimore is going to be a lot better than that 125 to one. I think they're definitely worth. Uh, if you know, if you want to throw a few bucks on them, throw five bucks on them. Why not? Uh, that that pitching staff is the best five I've seen in Baltimore in a few years. Now that they have Cobb to go along with Kashner, and if they can get Bundy and Gosman to take the next step along with Tillman rebounding, uh, they get uh, Britton back. I would not discount this team at all with that offense, that coach, uh, and possibly that bullpen. So I think they're the clear, to me they're the clear number three team. The thing is, uh, Scott, I just don't know about Boston. I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I want to even push Boston into the postseason. Uh, I'm just not sold. You know, they got a rookie manager. I still don't trust their starting staff. Kimbrell can't be any better than he was last year. So uh, I still worry about Boston. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's the pitching staff for me that is, you know, the big worry point. If I'm a Red Sox fan, everybody's, 
you know, people are saying David Price this, David Price that, Porcello, who is obviously only two years away, removed from being the uh, Cy Young in the American League. Uh, it's it's really, besides sale, there's nothing that really says, I'm, I'm a starting pitcher that's going to go out there and get the win for you. Uh, you know, that you really trust. You know, yeah, they have sure. a great closer. They have, they have one of the top five closers in baseball is Craig Kimball. Uh, but it's, it's getting the Kimball, getting to, you know, the back end of the bullpen with Matt Barnes and, and, and company and Heath Embry. Getting to that is, is going to be tough for them because if their guy can't go six, seven innings, it's going to be tough. Uh, Steve, do you, have any more confidence in Boston than we do? Because I just think if there is a team, uh, and, and maybe it's maybe it's Boston, Minnesota, maybe it's one of those two teams that if there's going to be a change in in the postseason from last year to this year, you would think maybe it's those one of those two teams or both. Uh, we know they're powerful with that lineup. We know they got a great starter in Sale and a great closer in Kimbrell. I just don't know about the starting pitching depth. I don't know about the clubhouse and a rookie manager. The thing you got to remember about the regular season in baseball is it's a bit different than the postseason. You know, making the playoffs and then being a true contender are two different things because once you get to the postseason, you have to have pitching. Yet you can win a lot of regular season games during the grind of a 162 game schedule with some offense. And that's why the Orioles are an interesting team, because over the past few years, they've been a power team, dangerous offensively, but I have never liked that starting rotation. And it might be a little bit better now, but I still don't think it's playoff caliber if they were to make a wild card and get lucky. Uh, The team I really like in this division is the New York Yankees. Uh, They're on the upswing. One thing I like to look at, not only one-run games, as I mentioned earlier, but I also like to look at expected uh, one-loss record. And basically, that's as simple as runs scored minus runs allowed, run margin. And the Yankees last year... Um, were almost plus 200 runs on the regular season. They actually were better uh, than almost anybody in the American League except Cleveland. They actually were slightly better than Houston even. And even though they went just 91-71, and 71, that expected one loss was 162, nine games better. Um, so I think the Yankees are actually flying a bit under the radar despite they're one of the co-favorites to win that entire league. And I think Boston has stagnated. They've been exactly 93-69 and 69 the last two seasons. Toronto was much weaker last year. I just feel like, once again, this is a division a lot of teams heading the wrong way where the Yankees actually are heading the right way, and I think they're a pretty solid pick to win this division. All right, in the Central Division, uh, Minnesota is, I mean, you look at, at, at the breakthrough season last season, but they still only won 85 games. Uh, you would think that they're better. They bring in Logan Morrison. All right, Polanco's on PED for half the season. We get that. Uh, but still, they, they, were, they had some young guys grow up. Uh, you take a look at the starting staff now, even though Santana's got a finger issue. Uh, but uh, Barrios is another pitcher who uh, is going to be a year older. They bring in Lance Lynn. They bring in Odo Rizzi. Uh, don't trust Rodney. I'll say that. Uh, but at some point, they definitely have to figure out maybe at the deadline to bring in a closer. And they got a really good manager. So it just, again, if there's going to be a team, uh, Scott, do you think it's Minnesota if – you're not going to pick the same five to make the postseason this year. Well, I mean, look, Minnesota is a team that last year certainly outperformed what anybody expected of them. You know, they're like, like, like always happens with the Orioles too. Uh, and I, I think that this team can absolutely make the playoffs again. They have, they have the depth again, a big issue. Jorge Polanco, their starting shortstop. He's on, he's out for 80 games. Uh, because of uh, the suspension, because of PED, so that's a big, a big hit to them. And we'll have to see who steps in and fills that role, whether it's going to be Escobar or Adrianza. Uh, but everybody's expecting a really big year from Brian Dozier. Like I, I had two fantasy drafts yesterday, and he went very early in both drafts. So I'm not sure about that, but like I said to you a couple weeks ago, their outfield is uh, is outstanding. And Buxton, uh, you know, the guy who everybody was expecting to be the, the main guy out there was the worst of the three last year. So if he gets his, uh, if he picks his uh, production up, you got Kepler and Rosario. That's a really good outfield. Uh, and then, of course, you got the, you know, the, the old reliable Maurer at first, who still seems to be hitting 300. And then if Sano, uh is healthy and, and, and can stay out of, uh, you know, a slump at all, uh, and he gets his average up, he's a monster. So I, I like this offense. And then they went and got Lynn and Odorizzi. So I, I'd be crazy to say, that I, I think that this team uh, can't make the playoffs. I guess the, uh, the, the the question is, 
uh, Steve, whether or not, again, if, if there's a team that maybe doesn't make it, I mean, could it be Minnesota? So do you think they're any much better than they were last year? Yeah, I mean, Minnesota is an incredible season. They won 59 games two years ago. Last year, they won 85 games to make the wild card. That's a 26 game improvement in one season. We hardly ever see that. Uh, Detroit, meanwhile, went the opposite direction. The Tigers went from 86 wins down to 64. They lost 22 games more. So this division has been real Jekyll and Hyde. The one consistent has been Cleveland. And they actually had a better season last year than the year they almost won the World Series two years ago against the Cubs, lost in extra innings. And then they come back the following season. The Cubs last year, of course, regressed. The Cleveland Indians go from 94 wins to 102 wins. And I talked earlier about expected win-loss record. Cleveland's expected win-loss record was 107-55, and 55, even better than their 102-60 and 60 record. So Cleveland very well could be the team to beat in all of baseball this year. And I just don't see anybody else in this division. I, I find it hard to believe Minnesota can get better after a 26-game improvement within one year. Kansas City, after their World Series run, they've been very mediocre the last couple years. They're 81-81. and 81. Last year, 80-82. and 82. And their expected one-loss record was 72-90 and 90 last year. I think Kansas City's probably even more of a fade this year. And I think Cleveland, once again, like the Yankees in the other division, are a heavy favorite along with Houston. I really think the three divisions are pretty clear-cut in the American League. It's interesting how Kansas City is not going full-blown rebuild all of a sudden. Uh, with Escobar, with Moustakis, with Jay, with Duda. So they're, they're throwing veteran guys into their lineup. And, you know, they're on paper, they're a better team than they were last year. But uh, that starting staff and not having that, you know, surefire bullpen that they used to have as well. Uh, those are big issues. Uh, the whole reason why they're sitting there at 250 to one to win it all. Okay, let's go ahead uh, with picks now. So uh, go ahead. Uh, do you have any different picks? Let me just first ask you guys, uh, Scott. Do you have any team that did not make it last year, not making it this year? Any team that did not make it. That, last year oh, any team that it made it year? last year that will not make it this year. Um. Well. Which basically means well, Minnesota or Boston. I mean, look. If any, I think if and this is unbiased. I, I've told you, you know, over and over again how much I thought they stunk, and then all of a sudden, a couple of moves uh, make this team better. I, I'm not saying the Orioles are going to make the playoffs, but last year they almost made the playoffs with the worst rotation in baseball in the last 50 years, uh, and they fixed that. They got rid of the two worst starting pitchers that I can remember in my lifetime, and they fix that by bringing in two guys that are proven guys. So if their rotation was even mediocre last year, they could have made the playoffs. So uh, I, I definitely like them at 125 to 1. I would definitely put a 5 five or $10 down like you said. But um, I still think that it's the same five. Steve, do you have the same five? I'll take Minnesota out. I think Boston probably you keep in there because they're still a notch above those other 500 teams we talked about. And I hate to take a third team from the American League East because just mathematically, you know, it's less likely to happen to have three teams with one division out of five. But I do think Baltimore could be a big sleeper out of all the teams we've talked about. And I also like Tampa Bay. We haven't talked much about Tampa, but if I had to replace the Minnesota Twins with another wild card team, I think I would go with either. Tampa Bay Rays or the LA Angels, who both hovered around 500 last year, and I think could be better this year. Well, I'm actually replacing just one team, and it is going to be Anaheim uh, over Minnesota. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and, and get the Angels in there, uh, take uh, Minnesota out, and uh, it seems like uh, we all agree Baltimore is a pretty good sleeper uh, in the American League. Okay, let's go to the National League, and we are going to start off, first of all, with the National League West. The Dodgers were runner-ups, and uh, it was a great season. They hadn't been to the World Series in a while, but they got to get started all over again and try to duplicate or, you know, get better of what they did last year, 104 wins and, you know, crazy winning streaks and all sorts of just unbelievable uh, accomplishments, and yet they still didn't win the World Series when it was all said and done, but... Look, there's no reason to think that they're not going to be the, the team to beat again here because uh, they still have a young team, good mix of veterans, guys that aren't over the hill yet that are still in their prime, uh, prime like uh, Clayton Kershaw. So, uh, yeah, the Dodgers look like they're the team. But uh, Arizona is also I'm, – I'm very surprised. I'll tell you right now, 
one of the more surprising things that uh, I, I, I've noticed looking all over these uh, futures is seeing Arizona uh, behind San Francisco and St. Louis with World Series futures, 84 wins on the win total when they had 93 last year. I mean, I'm sorry, but they didn't win all those games because of J.D. Martinez. So I, I don't know what this disbelief in as Arizona uh, in Arizona is uh, this year, Scott. And I don't have to convince you since you liked them as a as a preseason pick last year at 125 to one. They're gonna. I think they're better. So a matter of fact, I think they're gonna be right there with the Dodgers most of the year. I don't think I could say they're better. Um, again, a lot of this is going to ride on their rotation. Uh, Shelby Miller, that's a, a big question mark for me. And will Robbie Ray be as good as he was last year? I mean, he, Robbie Ray was projected like number four or five starter, ended up with a, two, a, a sub three ERA with 218 strikeouts and, and, a, and a really good whip too. I, I couldn't, I can't imagine him being that good again. Uh, and, and another thing that we've talked about often is who's the closer. If it's not Archie Bradley, you know, is, is who is it? Is it if it's Boxberger? I think it's, that's a, that's an issue. If Archie Bradley's not the closer, I don't really trust uh, the the back end of the bullpen. It'll be Bradley. Yeah, it's got to be Bradley. Absolutely. And and they'll be better there in the bullpen because of it. Uh, and, and and so I think and I do believe in Ray Steve. And I do believe also in the fact that they've got a really solid five starters. Uh, you know, you look, as a matter of fact, I'd rather take the depth on their starting staff than even the Nationals depth. They're four and five guys, uh, Godley and Corbin. Uh, then they'll get potentially Miller back. So that's why I think they're going to be better. Uh, so uh, I look at this Arizona team as a definite playoff contender. The only question is, is really Colorado, San Francisco, but with Bumgartner out a couple of months, They've got to be done. And Colorado, that's a team that I don't think got any better at all. I don't think they did anything. Yeah, the two wild card teams from that division last year, I definitely like Arizona better. I feel like they are a legitimate team. They went 93 and 69 last year. Their expected one loss record was 96 and 66, even better than that um, based on run differential. Uh, but I'm going to talk about a couple bad teams in this division. You know, you guys can make just as much money playing against teams as you can playing on good teams. And as I said earlier at the top of the show, I think the Giants are heading the wrong way once again. Uh, they lost over 20 games more last season than the year before. In fact, they were 23 games worse. Um, and they went 12-7 and seven in next inning games last year and still went 64-98. Not a good sign. But the San Diego Padres might be the most phony team in baseball. This is a team that's expected to be by far the worst team in the league in all of baseball last year. Yet they went on to not even finish last in their own division. They won 71 games. And you wouldn't think a 71-91 and 91 season would be overachieving but it was. Um, their one loss, expected one loss, was 59 and 103. So they were 12 games better than they should have been based on run differential. And I think uh, they're a real phony team still. And I actually think we get some value fading them just because 71 wins was actually misleading last season. All right, let's go to the East. And this is more than likely all going to be about the Washington Nationals and whether or not there's a second team. That's going to be more a battle probably. you got the Mets and the Phillies. With the Mets, it's about staying healthy with their starting staff or really even their players because Conforto is now out for a little while. And uh, Vargas is out with their pitching staff. Wheeler hasn't progressed. He's already been demoted. So you just don't know about that that pitching staff. Uh, that's 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 the difference, uh, Scott. With with I, I just I can't put the Mets in the playoffs just on a whim. I'm not saying – see, prediction's one thing. Throwing in some future money is another the 33 to one. I'm willing to wait a little while to see if they can keep these guys healthy before I go to before I even think about putting some money on the Mets. But we know if the Mets can stay healthy and get those starting pitchers into the postseason, they could be dangerous. But that's a big if. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of saying if about the Mets because uh, it's been four years now where it's that same exact if. Uh, you know, since they made the the World Series, it's literally been since then. If the pitchers stay healthy, they can do this, if that, and that. Nah, I, I don't think anybody else in this division is a threat at all. Uh, the Mets at thirty three to one, that's way too uh, that's way too strong of odds for them. Uh, I, I'm sticking with the Nats to win this thing, and I, I think they the Nats could end up with the highest wins in, in baseball this year. Uh, Phillies with 66 wins last year, Steve. They're 78 right now. That's the number. Uh, that's pretty much a 500 team. Uh, okay, they should be better. Uh, I get that. But 
Will they be that much better? Yeah, what's interesting about the Phillies is they actually had a worse record last year than they did two years ago, yeah. uh, 66 and 96 versus 71 and 91. And here again, that expected one loss record was very telling. In 2016, they were nine games better with their real record than what their expected record should have been. And then last year, they were six games worse with their real record. So maybe there is some value with them now. Not sure there's enough for them to sneak into the playoffs, but I do think they're probably the team that has the most upside in this division, from at least from recent years. The Mets, of course, are always appealing because of the pitching staff, but it's just not been healthy, and their offense is terrible. It was one of the worst in baseball last year. And if the Mets ever made the playoffs and their pitchers were healthy, they could win the whole thing. But I just don't think they have enough offense to get there during the regular season. All right. Uh, head over to the Central and the Chicago Cubs. Uh, we pretty much uh, have a pretty good idea that the Cubs are going to win it. You know, they struggled early on last season. All-star break. Uh, got uh, Milwaukee fans excited. Uh, but that didn't last uh, very long going into the second half of the season. Uh, but look, Milwaukee, St. Louis, you, you, you think those two teams will battle it out for second place. Uh, but I, I do like uh, what, what, what Milwaukee is doing. You know, I, I like, you know, I, I like the young GM Stearns and Council, the manager. So I like what they got going on there. Uh, the win total is 84. It was 86 last year. I, I, I'm, I know they overachieved last year, but I see no reason to think they're not going to get better. They bring in Yelich. They bring in Kane. They've got a, a few young players uh, that are just going to get better. Uh, I, I'm, I, you know, you're the starting staff. You, you know, you get Jimmy Nelson back. Hopefully by the All Star break. That's the big if. Which is why, if you're thinking about Milwaukee to win the World Series, which I'm not, uh, you definitely wait on that. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I'm 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 pretty good. I'm pretty. I feel pretty confident that Milwaukee is uh, going to take a next step, and uh, I, I'm going to put him into the wild card, uh, Scott. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that the Cubs are more worried about Milwaukee than they are St. Louis. I don't care what the odds say. Uh, the lineup for for the Brewers right now is is really really intimidating. You got you know all these guys that get on base, all these guys that can hit the ball out of the yard. The biggest question for me, like you said, is the rotation. Uh, is Zach Davies going to be good? Is Chasen going to be uh, as productive as he was last year? Uh, is Neville going to be as strong of a closer as he was last year? I mean, the guy was like a top, you know, a top five closer in baseball. Thirty nine saves, a sub two ERA. Uh, he did blow six, but uh, in that division, I mean, I think two or two of them against the Cubs. Uh, it's all about the pitching staff for me, and they got they brought in all these. You know other relievers too, uh, and and then of course they just they just cut uh, their opening day starter from last year, Yavani Gallardo. <laughs> Yavani and Gallardo. Junior Guerra. and 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 Junior Guerra. So they cut both those guys. Uh, I, I think the lineup's good enough to get him into the playoffs. The question is, is will the pitching staff hold true? And and uh, like you said, is is Jimmy Nelson going to be ready to go uh, sooner rather than later? All right, is this uh, what do you what are you thinking, Steve, about Milwaukee, St. Louis? You think it's uh, down to those two teams behind the Cubs, and if so, uh, who do you like? Because St. Louis has an 86 win total, uh, Milwaukee's 84, uh, but uh, Wainwright's already injured. Uh, you know, you still got to wonder about the, the the rotation in general, and then Gregerson's injured. Reyes is still out. There's some key pitchers already out for the Cardinals. Yeah, you just look at this division, you get a feeling like the Pirates and the Cardinals were the teams from four or five years ago that are fading. And now this division, of course, has been the Cubs recently. And I feel like if there's one team with upside here, it would be Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee wins 73 games two years ago. Last year, they win 13 more. They're at 86. And both those records are pretty much where they should be based on a run differential. However, they went just 9-20 and in extra inning games the past two years. So, Despite an 86-win season, they were just 5-11 and 11 last year in extra inning games. Uh, there's some upside there. If they can start winning some of these close games, maybe get a little bit of luck, definitely could get in the playoffs for that reason. That could bump them up to 90 wins. Um, the concern, though, I have is the pitching rotation. As I said earlier in the show, winning regular season games and then winning in the playoffs are two different things. And Milwaukee's the type of team I think could be consistent, could make the postseason as a wild card, uh, but I don't think they could win a, a seven-game series if they went that far just based on the pitching rotation. The Cubs are the real interesting team here because they had such a regression last year after finally winning the World Series. And if there's ever a spot for a World Series victory let down, it would be for a team like the Cubs who had gone over a century. Uh, they had 11 less wins, but they still were a 92-70 and 70 team. 
and um, are very dangerous still. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them be a play on team this year. They might actually play with a chip on their shoulder like they did two years ago when they won the World Series. Yeah, eight to one to win the World Series right now for the Cubs and uh, Washington, by the way, also at eight to one. All right. Now, uh, predictions for the National League. I, I guess we can kind of throw out the same thing. Uh, maybe a, I think we're in agreement here that four out of the five teams. I mean, may, maybe uh, you have to tell me, Steve, whether or not you're going to change, whether or not you're going to knock out Arizona. But you think four of the five teams go back to the postseason with uh, Colorado being the only team that doesn't make it? Uh, or do you have something else? Yeah, I hate always taking the same division winners each year, but in baseball it often holds up because, once again, you have so many games that you know you, you don't get these weird results like in the NFL where one or two games can throw off the standings because they only play 16. And if you look last year, five of the six division winners were the same as in 2016. The only difference was Houston and Texas in the AL West. I think we're going to have the same thing this year. I'm going with all three division winners, obviously, with the Nationals, Cubs, and Dodgers. I think Arizona is a legitimate team as well, so I'm definitely keeping them in the wild card. Colorado would be the team I bump, and I'd probably throw Milwaukee in there for right now. I think Philly and the New York Mets um, probably aren't quite as close as Milwaukee. And as I mentioned earlier, Milwaukee just 5-11 and 11 in the next inning games last year, still won 86 games. They caught, start catching a couple breaks in some close games. They could get to a 90-win team. All right, Scott. Uh, what do you think? Uh, are you going to make it to 3-3 three for three with all the same teams, the Nats, Cubs, Dodgers, Arizona, Milwaukee? Yeah, uh, I, I think Milwaukee also, you can't throw out St. Louis yet just because this is what the Cardinals do, and they still have an incredible one. I know they've got a lot of injured pitchers, but you still have a great one and two with Martinez and Weaver. So uh, and if, if you have two, I, 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 know it's, I know you obviously you want to have more than just two of your five be legitimate, huge, big-time starting pitchers, but if you have at least two, which is more than the Orioles have had for multiple years. If you have at least two, it gives you a probability of winning a, uh, at least that extra game uh, in that five. So you, I, I think if they win, it, I mean, they're going to win more than two out of every five, obviously, but if uh, if they can guarantee themselves winning most of those two two games with those two guys starting, and then once you get other guys healthy and once you know Reyes is good to go, let's see how good Walker can be this year. He's got to be... Uh, you know, better than he was last year. His his whip was uh, at an all time high. Uh, his his strikeouts were down. Uh, his home run balls was up. So if Waka can figure things out and if Wayne, I mean, I'm not expecting Wayne like to be anything, but uh, Waka is a big key for me with the Cardinals. Well, look, they got good young pitching with uh, Mikolas Weaver, Flaherty, Hicks. So they need those guys to step up. Okay. Uh, but uh, also, as we mentioned, the closer situation, uh, who knows, maybe it's Bud Norris. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to ask you guys about uh, the uh, the win totals. I want, want, want you to give me five of your best win totals for the year, win total plays. So uh, we'll start, first of all, with you, Scott. Uh, well, I'll give you my first five. So I'm going to go with uh, Baltimore at 71, Cleveland at 94, Minnesota at 83, uh, Texas at 75, and, uh, well, again, let me make sure. Baltimore over, Cleveland uh, over. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Texas under, uh, Arizona over, uh, and uh, I'm actually going to hold off on one more, so I'll give that fifth one in just a second. But go ahead, Scott. Give me your five. Baltimore over, 71. Like I mentioned, they were the worst, one of the worst historic rotations in a long, long time in Major League Baseball last year. And they and they still won more than 71 games, so they fixed that issue. So and assuming they don't trade Machado at the deadline, uh, Baltimore over at 71 and a half. That's just it's insane to me. Uh, I like uh, I actually like the the White Sox uh, over at 72. I think that they could get 74, 75. Uh, I, I like Houston under. I don't think they win 100 games this year. I know it's a 97. I, I think that they. They they they're more in the in the low 90s. Uh, I like um, the Dodgers under as well at 95 and a half, just because they're in that unbelievable division. Which you know San Francisco got better. Colorado may have gotten a little bit worse, but San Francisco got better. So that's still three teams that could beat them on any given night. Uh, how many has that been? Uh, I four. <laughs> four and and Milwaukee over uh, 84. 
And Milwaukee over 84. Yeah, because that's actually the other team that I'm putting in as well. I'm putting in Milwaukee over 84 to go along with uh, my other four. So you've got uh, – and you also had Chicago over 72, you said? The White Sox, yeah. Over, over okay. That's good. All right. Steve, uh, give me your five win totals. Yeah, we'll go down here in alphabetical order. I think Baltimore over 71 is interesting as well. Um, just not sold on the Orioles. It just is a very low number. I mean, this is a team that was winning in the mid-80s a couple years ago when they won um, 89 games and made the wild card just two years ago. Even last year, they finished last in the division, still win 75 games. So 71 and a half seems like a low number there. Um, the team to beat, I think, as I mentioned earlier, is the New York Yankees. Uh, their expected one record was over 100 wins last year, so I like them over 94 and a half for that reason. Also like the Houston Astros over 97 and a half. I know that's a big number, but that AL West looks so ugly. Every other team was below 500 last season. That I think Houston will just win games by default. And then we'll focus on the NL West. As I mentioned earlier, San Diego Padres are phony. They won 71 games last year, and that was a successful season. They should have won around 59 based on their run differential. Under 72 and a half, tremendous value there, Padres. And then the Giants under 83. I just don't understand that number. I think that's based on name only. Um, as I mentioned earlier, San Francisco was the best team in baseball a year and a half ago at the All-Star break, and they've been maybe the worst team in baseball since. This team won last season, 2017, just 64 games. Now their total is 19 games more. I just don't get that. I think the Giants under 83 is a really good play. All right. And let me also, as we go into our final segment here, which is going to be World Series futures, before we get to them, uh, let's uh, let's get your picks. So uh, I, my World Series pick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and 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 stick with Cleveland again. Uh, why not? Uh, one of these years they're going to break through. So I'm going to take Cleveland to win it all. And I'll have uh, Arizona as the runner up in the National League. Uh, Scott, who are you going to go with? I like your boys in D.C. to finally <laughs> win more than one, win a playoff series, first of all, and then maybe win multiple playoffs. I like the Nationals to uh, to win the World Series this year, uh, probably beating the Yankees. Wow, okay. Interesting. Which would be the worst, which would be such a painful World Series for me to watch. Okay. And, Steve, uh, so what are you going to get? Scott's got the Nats over the Yankees. I have Cleveland over Arizona. Who are you going to go with? Yeah, I'll go with Cleveland over the Yankees to get there, and I'll go with the um, the Nationals over the Dodgers to get there as well, although I don't feel great about that. It's right up there with picking UVA to win the NCAA tournament. You know, on paper, the hey, Nationals look great with that pitching rotation, that. but you just you just have that <laughs> gut feeling that they're the Washington Capitals of baseball. Don't and do that to me. they've proven that now. No, they have. They have You're it's, right. It's, something, it's not me doing it. It's the Nationals the water. doing You're it. Right. It's something in the water. In the they're, they're, it's just an Virginia amazing area. thing. And we've seen it with the Capitals for decades. I know. You know they just find a way to lose playoff games. And yep. uh, you start to wonder if that's creeping into the mindset of the Nationals franchise. But that pitching rotation – is so dangerous. And, of course, the Dodgers with Kershaw are dangerous at any point in the in the postseason if he goes three out of seven games. But the Nationals probably are even more dangerous. And if they can just get over that hump, um, they could very well be the team to beat. So I will take the Nationals over the Indians, even though my gut feeling tells me it probably doesn't happen. All right. So the, the other two analysts take my team to win the World Series, and I don't. But hey, uh, I, I've that's my rule. I don't I don't ever take my hey, team to win. Hey, I put Michigan in the Final Four, big guy. There you go. That. <laughs> so that helps. I, I like that. But yeah, national look for the for the Nats is there's no question if they're gonna if they're gonna win this year. I, I will say this that there's no way they win. I promise you, there's no way they win if they start Gio Gonzalez in any game in the postseason. I'm just throwing it out there. So uh, he can't be involved in the postseason if they're gonna have a shot. Uh, and, uh, but we'll see, you know, new manager. So we'll see how it works out for him. Okay. Uh, AJ Cole, AJ Cole. Yeah. AJ Cole will last about a week. Uh, and then, uh, probably, uh, your, your boy, they, well, your, your boy for six months, your, your rental will probably be coming up soon. Uh, which I actually thought was a pretty smart move. Uh, bringing in a veteran pitcher who will be in there soon. So, yeah. Eric Fetty is probably even better than Cole. Well, I know he's better than Cole. He throws 97, so we might see Eric Fetty, uh, at, uh, you know, in in, uh, in a few weeks as well. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go with the final uh, segment, with his, which is the World Series futures. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to ask you guys. Uh, you, you can you get one. Uh, each pick that you want to make, you can make 20 picks. You can make one, but they're $100 tickets. 
So uh, you're at the window. You're, 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 you've got as many tickets. I've, I've handed you 100 of them. You can decide if you want to use one or all of them. Uh, it's up to you. But the goal is, of course, by the World Series is uh, to always make more money than you invest in. Uh, my first four teams that I'm going to invest in right now are going to be the Dodgers at 6-1, to one, Cleveland at 7-1, to one, uh, Arizona at 25-1, to one, and Baltimore at 125-1. to one. So those are my $100 tickets. Those are my four teams. Scott, how many teams? How many tickets? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not the, you know, the biggest gambling man. I like to be safer than sorry. I'm going with three. I just picked the Nats. So I got to go with the Nats at 8-1. to one. I'm going with the Cubs at 8-1. to one, And I'm going with the Orioles at 125-1. to one. All right. There you go. Nats, Cubs, and Baltimore. Steve, I like Ariz. I like Arizona. Just not twenty five. Okay. Remember, I picked them last year at one twenty five, and I loved it. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the Dodgers uh, and maybe Colorado or San Francisco, one of those guys, come out of the gate strong, and we're gonna lower this Arizona uh, odds, and then, and then I'm gonna pick Arizona. You know, Steve, uh, I, I'm not. Again, I'm not picking the Dodgers to even get to the World Series, but. I know what happened last year, and I know what their reputation is. If they get off to a good start, and I think you would agree that within a month they'll be half of six to one. So I'd rather take them now at six to one uh, before that number goes down, uh, because look, they're probably going to win the division. Uh, and that's the kind of game you have to play with futures. If you're the type of person that's going to play futures all season long, just like the stock market. You know, you got to think about these things, uh, and that's 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 how I'm going to go with it. I just think that the Dodgers. I think this is the last time that we're ever going to talk about the Dodgers at six to one. Yeah, and the thing about futures, you know, always when your money's tied up for you know seven eight months, like it will be for baseball. Yeah, you always want to look long for the long time. shots because you, you're investing little to win a lot. Um, and baseball has a history of long shots winning the World Series, sure. much more so than like the NBA, where it never happens. <laughs> oh. so the Royals a few years ago were a huge price. You know, Houston was yep. actually a decent price. Yep. Um, and we've had the Giants and even the Cardinals in recent years. With a month ago, the Cardinals were a long shot, like 100 to 1 a couple years ago, and they made a run. So, you know, with that said, I hate taking favorites here, but then again, if your team's not going to be in the mix, it's a waste. And I really feel like the Nationals at 8 to 1 are a great play because I just don't see anybody pushing them in that division. So I think it's the same theory, Greg, that you have with the Dodgers that in a couple months, when they're running away with that division, it's going to be less than eight to one. So you could always hedge out if you really wanted to. Um, and LA at six to one, same theory. Although I do think Arizona could push them. And I like your long shot pick. If I had to take one long shot outside my division winners, I do think Arizona at twenty-five to one gives you a little bit of wiggle room because this is a team that can make the playoffs and win over ninety games. Um, so that would be my one flyer, even though I didn't have them in my final four. Uh, would be Arizona at twenty-five to one and Washington eight to one, LA at six to one. And I'll stay away from the American League right now. I really like the Yankees and Indians this year, but I think at five to one and seven to one, there's not quite as much um, wiggle room there. And if you take three National League teams, you, you've got a pretty good chance of having one of them in the mix. Yeah, you know, last year, and and, and again, every year is different. But but last year, you know, Cleveland won a lot of games, even though they didn't like they, they didn't have a great great start. So I, I understand that. But Washington was winning from the beginning to the end, and they never really dropped for whatever reason until really late, which is kind of why I'm staying away from them right now. And that's why I was talking about the Dodgers dropping so fast last year. So I'm kind of going on what happened last year, wondering if the same people are going to bring those bring those teams down, you know, a lot of money on the same teams. Uh, but we'll see. We'll be here uh, all throughout the season to monitor the futures uh, see what teams get up to good starts, because like you said, Steve, those long shots, you know, if we're kind of thinking about certain long shot teams or even teams like the Angels or Minnesota, uh, those types of teams, uh, if they get off to pretty decent starts, but the odds don't drop down too much, will that be enough to convince us that, OK, maybe they're a lot better than uh, than, than I thought? And uh, I'm convinced. Uh, but, you know, it all depends. You know, you, you would think it would take you. That's the other thing, too, is, is and I think you would agree. 
if you kind of done your research and you have a really good feeling about stuff, don't go changing your mind after a couple of weeks. Don't go crazy if you see a team dropping and you, oh, I better put some money on that team now before they drop any further. Don't just put money on a team that they're dro- just because they're dropping for dropping sake. Do it if you really believe in them. But uh, if you don't, you know, don't 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 have two or three weeks or even a month sometimes or two in baseball. You know how a month or two in baseball uh, doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I think the key, too, is you could take a stock market analogy is almost buy low, sell high. And that's what we're talking about with these five to one favorites like the Astros. You know, there's just not enough value for me to tie my money up for seven months with Houston at five to one right now, even though I think they'll run away with that division again. Whereas Arizona at 25 to one, you can take a flyer with them. Um, it's the same thing with the, the National League futures. I think one of the reasons the Nationals did not drop last year is because the Dodgers basically didn't lose over a 30- or 40-game span there in midseason, and everybody just kind of crowned them as the World Series and the National League champ. Um, and for that reason, you kept getting value with a team like the Nationals. So, and then L.A. got really cold after that. So I think you want to try to buy low, sell high on these teams, and not, as you said, overreact to a one-month period in baseball, because every team, good and bad, goes through a cold streak at some point during that 162-game schedule. All right, guys. So I, I know that we're going to be uh, doing this quite a bit during the season. And uh, so uh, that's uh, and, and, and of course, once we get through college basketball, because we'll be back on the air for our final four show on Friday at one o'clock. And then we'll be back on on Monday to preview the championship game. So we've got two more college basketball shows to go. And then that then will be freed up for baseball. And then, Scott, uh, you can let us know when you're going to air that. Bears and what was that called again? The birds and the bears. The birds and Come the on. bears. Okay, so that's going to be coming on. When's that coming in? 2020? <laughs> no, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, next week. Next week. Next what week. college basketball? What college basketball? Is on, the birds and the bears will be on. All right, sounds good. I believe you. All right, so that we'll let everybody know and uh, follow us on Twitter, by the way, at Prime SN, and, and we'll let you know, of course, when all these shows are available, uh, especially when they're available on demand. So uh, that's the best way, because I know uh, mostly everybody listens to these shows on demand. Uh, again, go to experts.covers.com. Uh, you get 50% off any purchase by using promo code Prime50. That's Prime50. And if you want to wager on Anything that we suggested you wager on here on today's show or anything that you want to wager on for baseball, go ahead and uh, click on the You Wager banner. And don't forget about that $100 risk-free wager uh, in your account as well. So uh, that'll do it for Steve Merrill at Covers and for uh, Scott Zolatoro and Greg DePama. Thanks for tuning in to Prime Sports Baseball's 2018 Season Preview Special. We will see you again real soon. Take it, don't you could I think